morning, everyone. How about we pray the Chaplet of Divine Mercy before Mass? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. The Chaplet of Divine Mercy, we offer this for our personal intentions, for the people of Haiti and Afghanistan, and for the renewal of the Catholic faith in our parishes. You expired Jesus, but the source of life gushed forth for souls, and the ocean of mercy opened up for the whole world. O font of life, unfathomable divine mercy, envelop the whole world and empty yourself out upon us. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. O blood and water which gush forth from the heart of Jesus as a font of mercy for us, I trust in you. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, the creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the Church, For the Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, for the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, in atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, 
and atonement for our sins and those of the whole world. For the sake of his sorrowful passion, 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 for the sake of his sorrowful passion. Eternal Father, I offer you the body and blood, soul, and divinity of your dearly beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. For the sake of his sorrowful passion. 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 Together, holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Holy God, holy mighty one, holy immortal one, have mercy on us and on the whole world. Eternal God, in whom mercy is endless and the treasury of compassion inexhaustible, look kindly upon us and increase your mercy in us, that in difficult moments we might not despair nor become despondent, but with great confidence submit ourselves to your holy will, which is love and mercy itself. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. Jesus, I trust in you. St. Faustina, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. <coughs>
Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Mass. Beautiful morning. Hope you had your windows open and you slept like a baby. So, um, kind of feels a little bit like fall. I don't mind that at all, to be honest with you. That's my favorite season. So today's the 21st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Uh, the readings are on 914. And this is the traditional Sunday in which um, husbands and wives um, elbow each other in the pew. And there are um, arguments on the way back to church because we have those, uh, those words, wives be subordinate to their husbands and all that jazz. We're gonna look at that and how there's really a connection with the gospel. The church didn't intend a connection, but I think there is one when we listen to the gospel. Um, yeah, so, yeah, I think that's it. We'll have mass, the best event of the week, and uh, we'll go from there. So let's stand and greet one another and say, hey, you made it to church, you get a sticker. Please join us in singing our opening song, number 460, Gather the People, number 460. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. My brothers and sisters, we gather to offer the holiest and most perfect prayer of the Holy Mass. We join our prayer to the perfect prayer of Jesus, who laid down his life that we might live. Let us call to mind our sins, and ask the Lord to forgive us with his great mercy. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Kyrie. Christe eleison. 
Kyrie eleison. Let us give glory to God as we sing together. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you. silence to collect ourselves, to be here for Mass, raise up our thoughts, our feelings, our desires to God, that we may be present here and nowhere else. O God, who caused the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise that amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. 914 are the readings. A reading from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel in Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The gods your father served beyond the river or the gods of the Amorites, in whose country you are now dwelling. Serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we also will serve the Lord, for he is our God. The word of the Lord.
the broken hearted and those who are crying. reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Wives should be subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord. For the husband is head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church. He himself, the savior of the body. As the Even as Christ loved the church and handed himself over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reference to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that the disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, Does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life, but there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me 
unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, men and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered him, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. The Gospel of the Lord. One of the most uh, awkward moments, but important moments of marriage preparation for a couple is to talk about what fidelity means. What fidelity means. And if there would be a moment of infidelity, what would you do in that situation? Fidelity does not negate the vow that you make. Infidelity does not negate the vow that you make. So think about the vows of a husband and a wife. I take you to be my husband or wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love and to honor you all the days of my life. For it to be a vow, you live those words despite what the future is going to hold. And that's what makes it a vow. It's your commitment to God and to your spouse that no matter what my spouse does, I am going to live this life to love and honor you in good and bad, sickness and health for the rest of my life. I'm going to do that. Now, how do you do that? Or what's an ideal version of that? Well, it's really to have a reflection of putting the words of the vows of marriage to the words of Jesus. And they become significant. Because he's a husband and the church is his bride. We're his bride. He marries us. So put those words to Jesus. I, Jesus, take you, church, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health, to love and to honor you all the days of my life. How did Jesus live those words? You know? Wow. All the way to the cross. All the way to the cross he lived those words. Right? And here's the thing that's even more profound about Jesus living those words. He did it when we were unfaithful. He has loved us even when the church is unfaithful, her bride, his bride. That's one of the main images of the Bible in the Old Testament. God is the husband, the people of Israel is the bride. And the over and over time of Israel becoming unfaithful. In fact, at one point, God calls Israel a harlot. You are a harlot, but you are to be my bride. This infidelity that happens. And that's what makes God's love so much more profound and real and concrete than we can ever imagine. That he loves us when we fail our side of the covenant. You know? He completely loves us. He will never stop being the husband to the church. He will never stop laying down his life for us. Never stop pleading for us. Never stop looking for us that we may be faithful to him again. Continually and over and over and over again. An example of that is today's gospel. The disciples, the bride of Jesus, says, Hey, what you're talking about, Jesus, is too hard to accept. Eating your body, drinking your blood, what are you talking about? This is craziness that you're asking us to believe. And Jesus says, the words that I have spoken to you are spirit and life. 
but some of you will not believe. Does that mean then God withdraws his love for the people that do not believe? No, he, he wants them even more. He longs for them even more. And that's what I love about God's love. It is an invitation that tries to elicit the best part of ourselves. To elicit the true self that's present underneath all of that sin that covers our true selves. That God is pleading, trying to plead to us, saying, love me as I have loved you. That's all I want is your love. And I'm going to wait till I can get it, and I'm going to fight for it. That's what Jesus did on the cross. He fought for our love, even when we were ungrateful. He fought for our life when we were selfish. He gave us life when we were dead. It's profound. If husbands would love like what Jesus is loving, a wife would do anything for her husband. If a wife would realize all that her husband tries to do for her, right? That's when that reading starts to pop. But part of the reason why there are some bruised ribs right now in church is because we don't love like that. That's why this one kind of rubs people wrong. But when you love like Jesus, it becomes the most beautiful reading because it's a reading of unity and love and help and communion and support and embracing one another, union. So that's what Jesus wants. And it really struck me earlier in the week, we discussed this gospel at staff and Here's the question of, uh, that we asked, we looked at. What emotion did Jesus have when he asked the question to the apostles, do you want to leave me also? What, what emotion was that? Was it anger? Was it frustration? Was it disappointment? I truly believe, I, I really think it was sadness. Do you also want to leave me? Do you also want to walk away? And then Peter says, Lord, to whom shall we go? And I kind of wonder, when, I want to ask Jesus when I get to heaven, I want to ask him, what were you thinking when he asked that question? And this is, this is my guess. We'll see if Jesus confirms it when you get there. He says, that's why I chose that guy. That's why I chose Peter. Because he did not have all the answers. He did not have all the reasons. But the one thing he was convinced about was that he was going to follow Jesus to the ends of the world. He was going to form his life around this one relationship with Jesus Christ. And that was the game changer for his entire life. Look at the things that Peter had to follow and understand after that sermon in John 6. He had to go through a lot with Jesus. But Jesus never stopped pleading with Peter. that he encountered, I want to love you as a husband loves a wife. That's the way I want to love you. Wow. So as you come to Holy Communion, he gives himself to you no matter what you've done. He gives himself to you no matter your fidelity. He gives himself to you no matter your sin. He gives himself to you no matter your darkness. He gives himself to you. Will you receive him? with living faith and love and say, yes, Lord, you are the Holy One of God. I pray that we're that loving spouse that Jesus deserves to love. Amen. Let us stand now and offer and profess our faith together. We say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born to the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, 
consubstantial with the Father. He was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We offer our petitions to our Heavenly Father. That the church will give fruitful witness to Jesus Christ, guiding us safely to eternal salvation. Let us pray to the Lord. That the life of every human person, from conception to natural death, will be enshrined and protected in our laws. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the people of Haiti will be sustained by God's grace and the support of the family of nations as they suffer from an earthquake and the terrible effects of that natural disaster. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the family of nations may come to the aid of those who are suffering in Afghanistan and for the conversion of the Taliban to Jesus Christ. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for God's grace and blessing upon St. Teresa of Calcutta School, as another school year begins, that Jesus may be the center of all that is learned and done. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all administration, teachers, staff, and students in our school district, who will start school on Monday, that God will grant the spirit of wisdom, the blessing of health, and the encouragement of friendship to all involved in education. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all Catholics to come back to Sunday Mass to receive the word of God and the sacred body and blood of Jesus. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord For all the faithful departed and for one, Marsario, who passed away this past week, and for Matt Riley, Dick, Naomi, and Pat Frana, and John and Ursula Condon Newkirk. Let us pray to the Lord. God our Father, listen to our prayers. We thank you for the faithful love of Jesus Christ, who laid down his life for the bride, the church. Help us to be a bride that submits ourselves to all of Jesus' love and to love him with our lives. We make our prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let's be seated as we prepare the altar. Please join us in our offertory song, number 651, You Are Mine, number 651. And then the chalice. to you in the silence. I will lift you from all your fear. You will hear my voice. I claim you as my choice. Be still and know I'm here. I am hopeful. Thank you. I love you and you are 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once for all, bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For at the Last Supper with his apostles, establishing for the ages to come the saving memorial of the cross, he offered himself to you as the unblemished lamb the acceptable gift of perfect praise. Nourishing your faithful by the sacred mystery, you make them holy so that the human race, bounded by one world, may be enlightened by one faith and united by one bond of charity. And so we approach the table of this wondrous sacrament so that bathed in the sweetness of your grace, we may pass over to the heavenly realities here foreshadowed. Therefore, all creatures of heaven and earth sing a new song in adoration, and we, with all the hosts of angels, cry out, and without end we acclaim. Holy, holy. you have created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore o lord we humbly implore you by the same spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Aloysius and St. Teresa of Calcutta, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant, Francis our Pope and Michael our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom we bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Let us rise and at the Savior's command, formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all the stress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other now the sign of peace. Peace, Braden. Peace, Gabriel. Peace. Peace. Peace, be with you. Okay, peace, be with you. Peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be. Please join us in singing our communion song, number 508, one release, number 508.
Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray the healing work of your mercy and graciously perfect and sustain us so that in all things we may please you through Christ our Lord. All right, hope all of you have a great day. Remember to take a bulletin out of church. And then tonight we have uh, parent meetings. Uh, six o'clock is the high school parent meeting down uh, here in church. Then it's the seven, uh, after that it's uh, a brief meeting for the confirmation students and their parents as well. So uh, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, grab a bulletin and hope you have a great day. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing song will be number 740, Sing of the Lord's Goodness, number 740. Sing of the Lord's goodness, Father of all wisdom, come to him and bless his name. Mercy he has shown us, his love is forever, faithful to the end of day. Stairs of death.
Honestly, one minute. 